Welcome back to Tila Fashion. This is the second part of the tutorial on how to make this not collar halter jacket with an open back. The first part was the pattern drafting tutorial and if you've not seen that, I'm going to link it in the description below. So let's get right into sewing this jacket. So this is where we left off with two color pieces cut on fold, four center front pieces, four side front pieces, four side back pieces and two center back pieces cut on fold. Before I start sewing, I'm going to go ahead to notch areas on the center front and the collar piece so it could make the sewing easier. So I'm going to notch where the collar is going to start on the center front piece there. Then I'm also going to notch the point where the center front piece ends on the collar. So I'm notching a point at the center front piece and I'm also notching a point on the collar piece. And I'm doing this together on the lining piece and the main fabric piece. I'm going to start sewing and I'm starting with the front piece. And I'm just taking a main fabric piece and marking with a chalk the back side of the main fabric piece so I don't end up interchanging the front for the back. So I'm joining the front pieces together side by side for the lining piece and the fabric piece. And I've just arranged them so I know how to join them. So this is it after joining the sides together. I want to make sure that you notch it so that the seam can be flat and you also iron it after notching. For the corner, I'm going to take the two pieces and place them right side facing each other. And then I'm going to sew in between the two notches there at the top, the sides and the bottom completely. After sewing, you just go ahead to notch the edges and turn it inside out and also iron flat. And when you are turning the collar inside out, you want to make sure that the two edges, the two sharp edges there are sharp enough because it's going to show on your collar if it's not sharp enough. So I've ironed all the pieces and they're looking a lot nicer now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one side of the jacket, that's the main fabric piece and the lining of one side of the jacket. And I'm going to join the collar to that side of the jacket. And I'm joining from the notch that we made on the center front piece. I'm going to flip the fabric front side facing each other and then place the collar in between and so. But before that, let me just go ahead to take the collar to the sewing machine and sew flat the two open areas so this is me just sewing flat the two sides of the collar that is still open before i join the collar to the center front piece so this is not on the center front and this is how the collar is going to stay on it so in order to sew it, I'm going to go ahead to place the two front pieces front side facing each other and then I'm going to sew like the lapel side of the jacket approaching the notch and then when I get to the notch, I'm going to go ahead to put the collar inside or in between them and it's going to start from that notch. 
and then starting from the notch i'm going to sew the three pieces together that's the lining piece the collar and the main fabric piece and you're just going to be careful while sewing take your time so that it can be nice and flat when you're done sewing and you're going to sew until you get to the notched part of the collar or the end of the sewable part of the collar and this is how it should look when you're done sewing the collar area and when you iron it you notch your sewing and you bring out all the edges it's going to look a lot nicer than this so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go ahead to turn this inside out and sew the lapel side and the break point side down to the bottom of the jacket i'm going to leave the bottom of the jacket and the side for now and then go ahead to sew in the armhole also and while sewing in the armhole you just try as much as possible to push the collar out of the way you could top stitch but i didn't top stitch mine so i just made sure that my sewing was nice so that by the time i iron it to be nice and flat and don't forget to go ahead to notch the curved edges when you're done sewing So after turning it back to the front, this is how the armhole and the collar area is looking. So later on, I'm going to sew the sides and the bottom of the jacket. But for now, I'm going to just go ahead to repeat the same procedure for the other side of the jacket and the collar. So this is what I have after joining the collar and ironing. Now I'm just going to set this aside, then I'll go and sew the back piece. So these are my back pieces and I'm using my chalk to mark out the back side to differentiate it from the front side. And I'm also marking it at the upper side of the back piece so I don't end up interchanging them. And then after that, I'm just going to go ahead to join the fabric pieces together side by side and the lining pieces together side by side. I want to do the same thing you did to the front piece after joining, that is notching, opening up the seam and ironing flat. Now you're going to put the lining and the main fabric piece together front side facing each other. I'm going to sew the top and the bottom and top stitch. I'm going to turn it back inside out and then close the two sides. So this is what I have after doing all of that. Now I'll go ahead with the front piece to sew the bottom of the front piece. So I'll have to turn it back inside out. Sew the bottom, top stitch if you can. And then turn it back inside out and close the sides.
So on a normal jacket, the side seams will not be showing because you'd sew it inside. But because this is an open back, we're using a different technique. Now I'll just go ahead to join the back to the front piece with the 1.5 inch seam allowance we took while cutting out the pattern. So after you're done joining the front and the back piece together with the seam allowance, you're just going to go ahead to make sure that you weave the seam that is showing at the side there so it can be neat on the inside also. Now I can go ahead to mark out the points for the button and the buttonhole. So here I'm just marking it out with a 2 inch difference, making it 4 buttons but I ended up changing my mind and I used 3 buttons for it. With a 3.5 inch difference between the 3 buttons. So since I didn't have the sewing machine for the buttonhole, I went ahead to do it outside. If the lot beside my house just helped me fix it with his brother's sewing machine. But I'm just going to go ahead to mark out the corresponding point for the buttons and I'm going to go ahead to fix the buttons. And the button I'm using for it is cover buttons. And I did the cover buttons in the tailor shop too. So this is the final product after fixing the buttons. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If it was, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like this video, leave a comment down below and I'm going to see you in my next video. Thank you.